On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces of the United States, Great Britain and Canada, after two months of diversionary maneuvers, began the largest landing operation in history – the Normandy landings. Despite heavy losses, the Allies were able to win a landslide victory and achieve their goal – to open a second Western Front to fight the Nazis. In today's video, we will find out how the Allies deceived and defeated the Germans and what were the results. For the first time, the need to open a second front in Europe was discussed even after the German invasion of the Soviet Union. At the end of 1942, Minister of Foreign Affairs Vyacheslav Molotov secretly went to the United States, where he was able to discuss this issue with President Roosevelt. However, the landing in France was delayed over and over again. Instead, the Allies launched an operation against the forces of Germany and Italy in North Africa and after the victory they landed in Sicily. The problem of a larger landing was solved at the end of 1943. At the conference of the Big Three, Roosevelt, Stalin, Churchill in Tehran, it was finally decided to open a second front in northern France. The operation was named Neptune, which was the part of another operation called Overlord. In the end, it was supposed to lead to the liberation of the entire northwestern France from the Nazis. The first important issue in the development of the invasion plan was the task of choosing the most convenient section of the coast for the invasion. The Allied command carefully examined the entire Atlantic coast from Norway to the Bay of Biscay. The areas of Pas de Calais, Normandy and Brittany were the most unsuitable for landing. Each of them had their own advantages and disadvantages. The German command believed that the Allies would choose the Pas de Calais region since it was the closest one to the British Islands. There were erected the most powerful fortifications and the main forces of the Wehrmacht were concentrated. The Allied command had to draw its attention to the less attractive but much safer zones of Normandy and Brittany. The Brittany Peninsula had many advantages. First of all, there were a lot of excellent ports, but it was too far from the English coast. In addition, blocking the further advance of the Allies on this piece of land was as easy as shelling piers. Together with possible supply problems, the operation could have ended in complete failure. Therefore, the Normandy option was very attractive, especially when you realize that the Germans thought that it was generally unsuitable for landing due to the lack of ports. As they would later find out, it couldn't stop the Allies. So, Normandy was chosen as the landing site. In order to achieve a surprise landing in France, disinformation measures were widely used to mislead the enemy about the time and place of the operation. The disinformation campaign was called Bodyguard. The Allies strongly supported and spread rumors that the Pas de Calais region would be the area of invasion. The aviation delivered massive strikes against defense systems in this area, intensifying the strikes immediately before the landing itself. A variety of methods were used, mostly the press and radio. In every possible way, the enemy's attention was concentrated on the same landing area. And it worked. The German command considered the Pas de Calais region as the most dangerous sector. Here the Atlantic Wall was the strongest. It was a system of permanent fortifications created by the Germans along the European coast of the Atlantic. The Atlantic Wall was widely advertised by Nazi propaganda as impregnable, but in fact there were very weakly fortified sections, and Normandy was one of them. However, in early June 1944 the Germans felt very calm and confident. Bad weather was only to their advantage, and they were convinced that in such conditions an invasion was simply impossible. Many commanders went home. Even the Field Marshal Rommel took a few days off to celebrate his wife's birthday. At the same time, the Allies were preparing to invade. The operation was planned to be carried out before dawn, with a full moon which would facilitate the work of aviation. But the day before, the weather became worse. There were proposals to postpone the operation. At this moment, the most important role was played by the chief meteorologist of the British Army, James Tech. He predicted a temporary improvement in weather conditions on June 6 that will be sufficient for the landing. This increased the surprise effect of the attack for the German troops. 
The Nazi command didn't expect a landing during the period of bad weather. The beaches where the largest amphibious assault in military history was to take place were given code names. More than 70,000 American soldiers were to land on the Utah and Omaha, over 80,000 British and Canadian troops on the Gold, Juno and Sword. But first, paratroopers were dropped behind German lines, almost 24,000 people. Then at dawn, landing ships began to land, with the powerful support of naval artillery and aviation. It was expected that on June 6 at least the first four bridgeheads could be united into a single front line. However, due to many reasons, this goal was not achieved. The Allies had the hardest problems landing on Omaha, where the Germans managed to press the Americans to the ground with fire. However, by the end of the day, the Allies were able to capture scattered bridgeheads and strengthen on them. Only on June 12, troops landed in five separate areas managed to unite. But in general, the operation was successful. By the time the length of the front line had reached almost 100 kilometers. And this was enough to launch a large-scale offensive and begin the process of liberation of Europe. 